Hi, welcome to our online um, training for the Set the Bar for Excellence. This is part one of Framing the Lesson um, training. So we conducted this training on October 17th of 2018, but just in case you missed it, um, we're going to discuss two things. Framing the Lesson will be part one and double planning will be part two. So let's look at our objective here. It is written in a lesson as a lesson frame. We have the learning objective and the closing product. So the learning objective uh, would be that we will practice the process of converting unpacked TEKS into a framed and double planned lesson. The closing product would be, I will create a learning objective and a closing product using a student expectation. So that's what we're planning on doing today. So here, let's review unpacking the TEKS. Here I have an Algebra 1 TEKS, uh, one of the SEs. So it says, write linear equations in two variables given a table of values, a graph, and a verbal description. Now, the first thing I do when I unpack my TEKS is I circle, identify my verb, and I circle it. And the only verb I see here is write. The second thing that I do is I take my um, SE and I look for the actual concept. What are we talking about here? And I underline it. So in this case, we're talking about linear equations and two variables. So to me, that's important to know, to, to know what the student is expected to do through the verb and to know what you're talking about. For me, I have to make sure that I have parameters. You got to tell me what, because I, I can go all over the place with this. So the next part is the most important part to me. It's the contextual information. So I figure out what the contextual information is and I box it in. In this case, it's given a table of values, a graph, and a verbal description. So I need to focus only on those three aspects. If I'm going to te teach the teaks, I need to make sure that I don't go out of my lane and try to do some other stuff necessarily. I need to make sure that I'm hitting um, values in a table, graphs, and verbal description. Once I have done all three of those things where I identified and circled the verbs, I've underlined the, um, the concept and I've boxed in my context, then I can take this essay and I can break it down into its smaller parts. Because I wanna make sure that when I go and I develop my lesson that it covers all of the teaks. So in this case, I'm going to break it down into three parts. So there's only one verb. So the only thing that the students are expected to do, they're going to be tested is by writing. They have to write something. What are they writing? Linear equations of two variables. How does, do these linear equations of two variables need to uh, appear? As in a table form. How else? As a graph. How else? In a verbal description. So I have to make sure that when I design my lesson, that it covers Writing linear equations in two variables, given a table of values. Writing in linear equations in two variables, given a graph. And writing linear equations in two variables, given a verbal description. So they will, if I have a test question, the EOC test question, they may have a table where the student is going to have to write an equation from. They may have a graph. They extract information and write an equation from. Or they may have a ver verbal description where the student is going to have to write linear equations in two variables. So I have to make sure that I address the entirety of the TEKS. Otherwise, I have not taught the TEKS in its entirety. So that's um, unpacking the TEKS in a nutshell. Framing the lesson. Framing the lesson comes from the Fundamental Five, uh, written by Kana Laird. That's one of our initiatives in the district. And when we talk about framing a lesson, it has two components, the learning objective, like I had, like I stated earlier, and the closing product. I like this picture because it has two hands, so I can remember, okay, two parts, learning objective, closing product. Here's an example of a, um, of a framed lesson. The first part, the top part is my learning objective, and my bottom part is my um, closing product. So the learning objective is we will identify the rise in action in a work of fiction. Very concrete, very clear. What do I need to do? This is what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to identify. We will identify the rising action in a work of fiction. Very clear. The closing product is I will. This is the student. The student will. I will work with a partner to identify and list words that create suspense. Here's another example. My learning objective. We will identify the elements of line equations. My closing product, I will write down how I would explain slope to a family member. So each one of them have characteristics that are, are presented here. The learning objective has to be simple and direct, but also the closing product has to be simple and direct. It's not convoluted. It's not a whole bunch of words. It is always written in student-friendly language. And it has to have, for the learning objective, it's stated in the we will, as a we will statement. We will this, we will that. 
The closing product is simple and direct also, and it's in student-friendly language. But you have to also um, make sure you understand that this is how do you know, this checks, uh, it's your check for understanding, is how you know the student learned. The first one, the learning objective is, what is the student expected to learn? The closing product is, how do you know that the student is learning? It's your check for understanding. Sometimes they call it an exit ticket. But it's, it's your way of making sure you um, you give them something tangible um, that they have to do in relation that um, that you know that they've learned the the uh, the concept, and it's always stated as an I will statement. Now here's an example of this is the text that we talked about earlier. So we're gonna uh, it says write linear equations in two variables given a table of values, graph, and a verbal description. So if I want to create the learning objective, remember it is what the student is expected to do. So we will. We will practice writing linear equations in two variables using. Now here is open. I know my contextual information is, is either in a table of graph, a uh, table, a graph, or verbal description. Now, depending on how much I'm planning to cover that day will determine which ones of these I will add in my learning objective. If I have no intention of doing all three today, I would have no there's no reason for me to put all three in there. If I'm only going to address uh, it in table form and graphical form. I, that's those are the only two I need to add in there. And I can leave verbal description off. So this, because it's three different uh, contextual components, determine what do you plan on doing within your 90 minute block. A good way, a good resource you can use is your PLC menus that was given to you at the start of the year in your PLCs. Now this um, is a lead forward document and it's and it should help you to kind of identify some activities you can do. So right here in this column, it talks about, uh, it gives you a list of verbs. So you can find the verb that's in your teeks and you can align it with maybe a possible activity that you can do. And then um, it also has the evidence of learning as your check for understanding. So this could be something that you guys do as a we will, in your learning objective. And this can be something you do as an I will. Now, when, what you need to make sure you do, though, is as you go from your um, from your you unpack teaks to create your learning objective and you create your closing product, that your closing product and your learning objective have to use the same verbiage. So whatever your verb is, is what the state of Texas has determined. That's what the student needs to be able to do. So you can't don't change the verb. Keep the verb. Be consistent with it. Um, so write is here and then write is here. And um, what am I writing? Linear equations and two variables. So I keep everything consistent. So now we're going to use this um, this uh, this SC and we're going to uh, create a closing product. <clears throat> so in this case, it says I will. You can't see it, but I will write linear equations and two variables using a table of values and using a graph. You can't see that. So what do we do? We're practicing it. And at the end, that student should be able to do it. And that really is framing a lesson in a nutshell. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, um, you can always con contact uh, me or you can refer to the book. It's, I love the Fundamental Five. It's um, Fundamental Five. It talks about framing a lesson. It has two things, a learning objective and it has a closing product. Thank you.